Looks like one of the star defensive tackles Philadelphia had circled on their draft board might be falling outside of the top 10 in Jalen Carter. Also, a very interesting proposed trade back with the Pittsburgh Steelers, where the Eagles go from 10 back to 17 and get additional draft compensation as well. And Quez Watkins, is he really worth staying on the Philadelphia Eagles? I'm Thomas Mott. This is the Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Friday. Thumbs up and subscribe to the show. We get closer to 10,500 subs every single day. I appreciate each and every one of you. Let's begin with some draft things going on in the National Football League, most notably the top 10 that will affect the Philadelphia Eagles. And to me, is the probably the biggest story of the entire week. Pro Football Talk has it up on your screen here. The Raiders will not consider Jalen Carter in the draft. Now, this is not, you know, a channel that likes to talk about the Raiders that often, but the Raiders are two picks ahead or three picks ahead of the Eagles, as we will see. And Jalen Carter means his free fall continues to be really astronomical. And if you're getting... An actual football team admitting that they're not going to draft somebody who was considered to be a top five pick a couple of months ago. This guy could fall easily to Philadelphia at 10 and be giving the Eagles a really big decision about what they're going to do with the supposedly star defensive lineman who's having some issues off the football field in Jalen Carter. Listen to this quote. Raiders have a number of ways they can go with their seventh overall pick in this year's draft, but their options reportedly do not include former Georgia defensive tackle Jalen Carter. Raiders head coach Josh McDaniel said this week via Vincent but I can't say his last name, sorry, on the Las Vegas Revenue Journal, the team would do everything we have to do to make sure that not only Jalen, but every player, we know exactly what the truth is before drafting a player. Vic Tafur, or Taffer, of the Athletic reports, that the process will not be an extensive one when it comes to Carter, however. Taffer reports that Carter has already been crossed off by the team and Quote, they go on to talk about how his recent arrest um, in Georgia and obviously the Henry Rugg situation means that the Raiders are a little bit weary of taking guys with potential or alleged off the field issues. Now you're saying, Thomas, why does this matter for Philadelphia? Well, look where Philadelphia is inside the top 10. They're sitting there at 10, and the Raiders are 7. And we know that Jalen Carter is going to fall to at least 5. But the expectations that there are going to be 4, now potentially 5 quarterbacks in the top 10, Hen and Hooker, if you've seen some recent mock drafts from Tennessee, we understand that you're going to have quarterback 1, quarterback 2, probably Will Anderson 3, quarterback 4, and then you get to the Jalen Carter situation. Seattle could potentially make a run at him, but there are reports Seattle would want Hen and Hooker at number 5 to potentially be the heir apparent to Geno Smith, who's on a very short-term contract despite the fact it was for multiple years. Then you have the Lions, who, again, might take a look at Jalen Carter, but at the same time, they could use some corner help, and so you figure maybe Devin Witherspoon or Christian Gonzalez goes off the board there. Atlanta is another option, obviously the Bears, but then Philadelphia. If you have a situation where 7, 8, 9 don't want Jalen Carter, then the Eagles are going to have a very interesting situation on their hands because Howie Roseman's favorite position in the entire NFL is defensive and offensive line, and they're going to have a chance possibly to draft the best defensive lineman, the best interior defensive lineman in this year's draft. Will Anderson is an, a, a pass-rushing defensive end. Jalen Carter is a defensive tackle, and hence my point. And they're going to have to make a call whether their culture and their organization and their coaching will be able to overcome the off-the-field issues with Carter. If they think so, then you draft him and you hope he turns into Fletcher Cox 2.0. But if you don't think your culture can overcome the off-the-field issues, which reportedly are out there, and again, who knows if it's true or not. I don't want to you know, disparage someone's character, but the reports are out there. Then Philadelphia might pass on, again, a spot they feel like they need to improve despite getting Contavious Street yesterday and a player that once upon a time was very much considered maybe even the best player in the entire NFL draft. So we'll keep an eye on that. It's going to be very, very interesting. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Would you take Carter at 10? Despite everything we're hearing, and now the Raiders not being interested, I'm very curious where you guys are there. Thumbs up for the Carter situation and Philly just uh, having to make some tough calls here. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do. Okay, a couple of mentions here about uh, the hat situation. We uh, were sold out. We're sold out of the hats that we launched just a couple of days ago. And so crazy, crazy stuff there uh, that happened over the past couple of days with you guys really enjoying the hat. Everything has shipped out. So you guys will be, will be receiving those. I'm working on something new here. I, I really like the launch, but I think I can make it better. I think I can do higher quality, already working with an embroidery shop and making it even better in terms of the actual stitching, 3D stitching as well, possibly some logo and updated changes to the overall design. 
fan. I want to make something that is not just for fans of the Thomas Mott Show, but for Philly fans in general. And so I'm working on something new. It's going to take a couple of weeks to get the fresh design in and go ahead and get the uh, mock hats to go ahead and come in. But stay tuned for this. Obviously, you can't access the website right now because I'm kind of relaunching some things. But stay tuned. It's going to be really, really cool whenever we go ahead and do the update. I appreciate each and every one of you who jumped in for our first release. You are going to be very impressed with the second release. Uh, mark my words on that. Okay, I want to go over here to this mock trade. This is going all over Twitter right now. Sidelines Eagles has this up on your screen. This has almost 1,200 votes in 22 hours, 5,000 views. Listen to this. This is something no one's talking about in terms of Philadelphia trading back. We're all talking about who do you take at 10, rightfully so. But Philadelphia historically likes to make trades, and they historically like to trade back in the first round. Would you do this trade? Would you take the 10th pick? to the Steelers for their 17th and 32nd picks. Obviously, the Steelers are the first pick in round two because there is not a 31st pick or 32nd pick in this year's draft. So it's the 32nd pick, but it is the first pick in the second round. 62% uh, say yes, 20% say no, and 16% say yes, but Steelers say no. And so there's a lot of debate in the comments section about the fairness of this trade. I'll show you the actual trade generator to see if this one would pass in a second. I would do this trade. Genuinely, I would do this trade. And I wouldn't do it simply due to the fact that I don't know who to take at 10, but I think you could still get one of your top players at 17 and then give yourself two second round draft picks and still sit there at number 30. Now, if you think Bijan won't be there at 17 and you want Bijan, you wouldn't do this pick. But if you like Lucas Van Ness, do you need to take Lucas Van Ness at 10 or do you wait to take the Iowa pass rusher at 17 and still get another draft pick? You'd have almost back-to-back -back draft picks, 30 and 32 going into round two. Now, in terms of the draft pick value calculator, every single draft pick has a calculated value and you can punch this in into your Google, uh, you know, in, into Google and, and, and look it up yourself. Calculator Soup has this one right here. Eagle we give up 10. The Steelers will give up 17 and 32. You calculate it, and it's a little bit in favor of the Pittsburgh Steelers because obviously they're giving up 15,040 points or 1,540 points versus the Eagles team at 1,424 points. However, the Steelers have somebody in mind they desperately want, perhaps a wide receiver, perhaps a cornerback, then trading up gives them that additional value. Now, the Eagles could throw in 94 overall, their third round draft pick, and it would go ahead and bump it up just a little bit in value, even though the trade uh, calculation later doesn't necessarily bring it up as much but your gain loss percentage has about halved and so again an option where you could get an additional second round draft pick or get rid of the third round draft pick as well and that to me would make some sense would you guys do this trade I, I think I would it really matter what happens at draft night. This would be a draft night trade where we're at pick nine on the board and the Eagles are on the phone and their guy is falling and you want to you know, move backwards. That's when this trade would go ahead and happen. But curious what you guys think uh, about this one. Okay, I want to quickly go ahead and throw up this Football Outsiders article, more specifically this little uh, chart that you see on your football screen or on your screen talking about the highest failed reception rate of wide receivers and tight ends. And this gets us into the Quest Watkins situation because as you see here, the wide receiver with the most failed um, reception Excuse me, the highest failed reception rate, at least number two, is quite is Quez Watkins right behind Greg Dortch of the Arizona Cardinals. Watkins had 33 receptions. He had 14 of those failed, or 14 additional passes thrown to him that were failed. A 42.4% uh, fail rate, fail rate, and that goes along with Isaiah Likely of Baltimore, Rondell Moore of the Arizona Cardinals, Tyler Conklin of the New York Jets, Nelson Aguilar, mm, shocker there at with the New England Patriots. It's not a list you actually want to be on, and that brings us into a broader conversation about Quez Watkins. Although we got a lot of questions on our Wednesday live show, our Wednesday link with Josh Davis, the Philly Special Show, asking, would you take Jackson Smith and Jeba? Would you take the wide receiver to TCU in the first round? to replace Quez Watkins, and while these numbers say you need to replace Quez Watkins, I don't think Philadelphia is going to do it, most notably because Quez only got 33 receptions last year. You're going to bring in a first-round draft pick and expect him to catch less than 50 balls due to the fact that you have Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard? I don't think so, and so Quez is going to be on this football team. What I would do is find the best undrafted free agent wide receivers, offer them more money than other football teams will do, bring them into training camp, and let it be a complete open competition, and give these undrafted guys dangle the carrot in front of them saying, hey, you can be the wide receiver three on this offense if you can beat out that guy, Quez Watkins, and he doesn't catch a lot of passes. So that is my way to address this. We'll see what the Eagles do going forward. All right, that's it for us here on a Friday edition of the Thomas Mott Show. Another show on the weekend, as we always do. It's the start of April. It's going to be a very interesting next couple of weeks here in the world of both the National Football League and the Philadelphia Eagles. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and hit that thumbs up button. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.